Welcome back, well back. Today we're gonna be going through the tutorial for Choco Break. It's a brick break game. And this is what it's gonna look like. Okay, to begin, I'm going to close this out first. We're going to start a new application. And I will break this down into three parts. Um, one, one video per frame. Since our limitations for using Click Team Free Edition is a three frame application. We're going to rename the first frame title menu. We're going to leave the size the same. Now, if you click on the frame number, it'll open up the frame. And we are going to go over to our library. In our library, under tutorials, you will find Choco Break tutorial. And this is where we'll use all of our items. This is where we'll get all of our items from to create the game. If you scroll down, you will see a active called a title screen. Or screen title, I'm sorry going to drag and drop it and click it we're going to go over to size and position and set it the position to zero zero that way it's square in the frame now if you're going through the actual tutorial it's going to tell you to add a button but i'm going to do it a bit differently from the tutorial and i'm also going to add some features that wasn't actually in the game that you just saw so if you double click you'll bring up a create let me resize this so you guys can see it. You'll bring up a create new object menu. And these will be all the objects that you can use in the free edition. The standard and developer edition has more objects for you to use. We're gonna create a string. You will see a crosshair, just click to place the string. We're gonna, if you click on an object, you'll select it. If you click on it again, you will be able to resize it. And if it's active, if you click on it for a third time, you will be able to, you will be able to change the rotation of the object. Now we're gonna change this text to say the word play. And you can do this one of two ways. You can double click it and delete all the text and actually type in play or you can come over to the properties and under settings in paragraph one you can change text to play and then press enter and you notice that it will change now under the text options we're going to change the font and the size so click on font and we're going to change it to comic sans And we're gonna change the size to about 24. Let's see how that works. That looks pretty decent. Resize the text box. And then we're gonna put it in the middle of the frame. So if you right click, align and frame horizontal center. And just use the arrow keys to get it in in the position that you want trying to make it centered with his umbrella and now we're going to go to the event editor and at the start of frame so right click new event and let me just move this so you guys can see it so in your new condition dialog box we're going to click on storyboard controls 
and at start of frame. And we're going to play a sample. Now, the link to the sample will be down, or the link to the music will be down in the description. Um, it's from Zapsplat. It's a really good royalty free website for anyone who's getting into game creation and don't have the resources or the time to make sound effects or music or things of that nature. And it will be wherever you put it. So you'll right click, or sorry, music, play and loop music. Well, oh, I'm sorry. That would be if you have the, if you have the standard version. You can't actually use music files on the free version. So for the free version, we'll play and loop sample, and then you'll browse from a file to find that sample. And I'm going to go to that sample real quick. And we're going to set this to zero. Now by typing zero, you tell the, oh, hold on, let me move this so you guys can actually see it. By typing zero, you tell the program that you don't want this music to stop playing until the application stops. So it'll stay on a continuous loop. And we're actually going to add one more command to this line. So right click, insert. And we want to tell the program to look for music playing in the beginning. And if nothing is playing, then play the sound. That way, when we loop back to our title menu, the music won't start over again. So we'll right click on the sound icon, sample, a specific sample not playing. And we're going to check for Mr. Clown. And we're going to drag this to the top of this event box. Now, ClickTeam is a very systematic program. It reads top to bottom. So, if I'll, I'll demonstrate on the next video, but if you have a certain command that you want to run before another one, you have to make sure it's above the command. And I'll show you why in the next video when we start making the game. Now we're going to add one more command and we'll be done with the title menu. So click on new condition, mouse and keyboard, and when the mouse clicks within a zone, it's going to bring up this dialog box and we're just going to leave this the same. We only want a single left click for this and we're going to drag this over and we just want to enclose the word play. That way, when you click on the word play, you'll jump to the game frame. And in order to do that, we're going to right click on the storyboard controls and click next frame since this is a three frame application. Now, if you have more levels and you have a continue button, then you'll jump to, you'll use jump to frame instead of next frame. And that'll be it for the first video. Um, that's all there is to our title menu. Let's go ahead and go to our storyboard and add a new frame. And then run the application and see what happens. Oh, there is one more thing. We have to go to Workspace Toolbar. Click on the application. And under Runtime, we have to check Place Sound Over Frame. That way the music will play between frame to frame and I'll show you the difference without this if we were to run the application and go to the next frame the music will stop and with this checked now if we were to do it the music will play over to the next frame okay. go ahead and save And I'll see you guys on the next video.